Here we are at our example one from our 4.4 set of notes. We're talking about the zero product property today. And honestly, guys, this is actually a pretty important um, property that you're not only going to use for us, but also especially in honors algebra two pre-calc and calculus. This really comes up quite a bit. OK, it's pretty much how you solve for a lot of things um, for those higher degree polynomials. OK, so definitely know how to do this because you're going to apply it a lot now. The solutions of a quadratic equation, those are called the zeros of an equation, okay? And so pretty much where you see this x minus p times x minus q, that's pretty much just factoring what we've been doing in the past. But what's a little bit new is we're setting it equal to zero. And in a little bit, we'll talk about why you can do this. Um, but I want to just kind of touch base with example one as we're kind of doing that so you can also see why that's occurring. But pretty much what the zero product property says is that you can split each one of these equal to zero and then solve for each one individually. And when you do that, the numbers P and Q, what those are equal to, are called the roots of the function, okay? So let's actually see this kind of an action. Now you have a quadratic in this for example, one, and we know that we go ahead and factor that down. So we have our a value one times our C value 56. And we end up then with 56. Our B value here is 15 or negative 15, if you want to apply the negatives with it. And now just like normal, we create our list. Okay. And so we have one and 56. We have 2 and 28. It's not evenly divisible by 3, but it is divisible by 4 and 14. And then lastly, 7 and 8. So that's pretty much the factored list for that 56. And we have to ask ourselves again, which pair combines to give us that B value 15 in the middle that we need? Well, 7 and 8 accomplish that. So those are going to be our two values that we have. So 7 and 8. And then we have to kind of, we have our 7x and our 8x. We need to think about how these combine to give us, we want negative 15 in the middle. Well, both of these then would have to be negative for that to occur. Then we're going to go ahead and just drop down our other terms. So we have our 1x squared and our positive 56. So, so far, everything is really just the same as what we've been doing. And then on the right side, we have it is equal to zero. Now, when we factor by grouping, we're just splitting this up and we're just looking at the first set. So we notice that we can pull an X out of the first one and then we would be left with X minus seven. Whereas when we look at the second one, we notice that we can pull out a negative eight. Remember for your higher degree, when looking at those two, uh, you wanna try and pull out a negative if you can, just because you want your, this guy right here, the one with the X, to be a positive value. So that's why we're gonna pull a negative eight out. And then we're left with X minus seven when we do that. If we didn't pull out the negative, these guys would not match. So you need to pull that negative out. Is equal to zero. And since they both share that X minus seven, we're gonna go ahead and factor that out and pull them out of there. And when we do that, we would be left with our X minus eight is equal to zero. So, so far up until this point, We've really been doing all the same stuff we have been seeing already, okay? The, the right side is just equal to zero. Now comes in the zero product property, okay? And again, from the definition, it says you can split them up and set each one equal to zero. Now, I really want you to see why this works, okay? You have x minus 7 times x minus 8. If all of a sudden I just said this part is equal to zero, one big zero, well, zero times this X minus eight, that would be zero. And zero is definitely equal to zero, right? Alternatively, what if I said this X minus eight is equal to zero? Well, I'm left with my X minus seven times zero. And that is also zero equals zero. And that's really why your zero product property works. And that's why by the definition, it says you can take each individual part, this X minus seven and this X minus eight and set each one of those equal to zero. So that's kind of how this is working. 
And then you would just solve each one individually. So we would add seven to both sides and get x equals seven. Here you would add eight to both sides and x equals eight. So there, what we've done is we have solved for this particular quadratic by factoring. Again, though, that is example one from our 4.4 set of notes.